Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be doing a new series now that my Champions content is over uh, and just 2023 season content in general. And I'll be rebuilding, like saying what I would do for every mid to bad team at the tier one level. Um, any team from like DFM to the team on your screen, 100 Thieves, um, anywhere from that range, even maybe some teams like Loud if they're breaking up in, um, like because of their internal issues or NRG because of FNS and Psalm leaving something like that just any team that needs to make changes I'll be making a video on teams making two or more changes uh, most of the time I think most of them and then at the end I'll be going through every region individually so I'll do Americas first then I'll do an Americas recap video then I'll go on to the next region which will probably be Pacific then I'll do the recap then EMEA and so on. Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I spend a lot of time researching players for the series. So any help, whether it be subscription, like, um, or even going and following me on Twitter, really appreciated. Um, also, I just made a Discord server. It literally has one channel in it. Um, if you're interested in joining that, link's in the description. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with that, but I might do something with it in the future. So. I don't know. Um, also, leave a comment on what you thought of the roster, along with how the video flows. This is really open to constructive criticism. Like, if you want a certain part of the video to be different, whether it be how I'm like what I'm explaining, like I'll get into it later probably, and I'll probably talk about it more in the next video. Um, but any criticism like that, uh, very much welcome. Um, and yeah, before we get into everything, um, I just wanted to let you guys know, or maybe some few housekeeping things, if that's a better word for it. Um, this roster and this whole offseason, this whole series is what I would do. This is not a prediction of what I think the teams will do. Um, honestly, I don't think this is going to be anywhere close to what the teams do, from what I've heard, uh, based on like tweets from people who are deep within the scene. Um, and yeah, so this is going to be a whole series. So if the, if like there's a player that you think should have gotten onto this roster, like say you think a certain player is better than a player that I picked up, that's probably because I picked them up on another team. So it's going to be kind of a slowly revealing everything kind of series. So don't get mad at me if I don't include your favorite player or even the best player in a certain role in this video. Um, just tune into the next one. Maybe he's in that one. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So, yeah, as I said in the intro, I will be rebuilding 100 Thieves Valorant roster today. Um, my favorite team. Uh, very depressing team to root for, but hey, it can't be as bad as some other teams, especially like MIBR. Um, but I guess all those fans are rooting for loud anyway. But also, I was rooting for the top ending team, so it doesn't matter. Um, so, just to start here. We'll do a little 2023 season recap where I don't know why that just went back. That's weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> ignore that. Uh, they brought Cryo in in the offseason to replace Will on their roster, which is an objective upgrade, uh, even in hindsight. Uh, and they also won Red Bull home ground, uh, which was a kind of stepping stone for the hype that they had at the beginning of the season going into lock-in. Where, like, if you look at the placement, that's like, oh, okay, I guess, yeah, they went out against Fnatic, but, like, the fashion that they did it was fairly disappointing. Um, we'll get into some of the more specifics later. Um, then they got 8th in the America's regular season with a just insane loss to MIBR in Week 9, I think it's technically it was. Um, but, yeah, that was just awful. Um, and then 5th, 6th in America's LCQ, which seems a lot better than it was because they went on the out in one against Sentinels, uh, playing some insane comps with some insane ways of playing them. But overall, a very, very disappointing season for a team that had a lot of hype coming into the year. So one thing that I want to go through with every roster is the goal for this roster, because obviously every team isn't going to make changes and instantly be able to compete with the best teams in the world. So for me, my goal for this roster is a team that can compete in the America, America's playoffs 
instantly um, and maybe be able to make some international events, like whether it be the top three in the playoffs or like around where maybe C9 finished. Obviously, you don't expect their regular season, but something around their playoff form, I think you could see with this roster um, and maybe even better if given time, then you can probably compete for a title. And I do think this team definitely has a chance to do that. Um, obviously, some players are going to need to improve a little bit based on what they did last year, but that's always possible. And especially with a good surrounding core in this team, I do really have faith in this roster that they can at least accomplish this goal um, set for them right now. But now we got to get into who's staying and who's going. So the one player I'm not touching at all is Bang. Uh, I'll get into it a little bit later, but I just don't think there's any clear upgrades over him. Um, and then we have two players making role changes here in Asuna and Cryo. Um, yeah, I th this might be a hot take, but I'm putting Asuna on Duelist with the jet changes that just came out. I do think this guy is an unbelievable entry player, and I still think he could play attack side jet. I just don't love his defense side offing in this team and for defense side opping i'm keeping cryo but i'm putting him on sentinel so whether he's playing the killjoy which with him will probably be very rare sorry if you can hear my dog barking he's being a fucking moron um but he can play killjoy on some maps and kind of lurk and just do his thing kind of maybe similar to what Les does on loud um and then he can play the chamber at a world-class level, he's one of the best defensive offers in the game, as I'll get into later. Um, I just kind of explained that whole thing, so I might have to skim over him later. But overall, this might be an unpopular thing, but I really think this change would be good for the team. Um, and then the two players I'm removing, sadly, are two of my favorite players in Derek and Stellar. Um, yeah, Derek is fucking hilarious on stream. He's awesome. But he just was not good enough last year. And Stellar, same thing. Just, frankly, was not up to the standard that this org demands. Um, out of especially their IGL. So, now we got to get into why I'm replacing both of these players in Derek and Stellar. And we're going to start with Stellar here. Um, where, in my opinion, 100 Thieves was the worst, like, NA team in terms of calling. Whether it be, like, the mid-rounding or just general ideas. Um... I do think, like, they were better than, at least in the regular season, Crew and MIBR, but especially when it got to those big pressure games, especially that game against Sentinels. Um, they were just horrible on the attack side, and they could never get anything done, whether it be because of that or because of other issues that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, he was one of the worst fraggers in America, so it's not like he wasn't doing a ton of calling while he was playing and then still fragging out. No. Um, and I think the biggest reason was he talked about it in, I think it was the unnamed podcast with why I think I'll link it in the description if I remember. Um, but essentially he said like he pushed for a more loose calling system, especially when Sean was there, but now they were implementing it with hundred thieves. This was back before lock-in and that just didn't work. Uh, their more structured calling system with Sean was so much better um like it wasn't even close in my opinion like i had him as a top three on aigl going into the year and then they completely changed their calling style and it didn't work and i do think him really pushing for that kind of makes me have less confidence in him uh as a caller just in general like just not having the correct answer for what the team needed to do and then onto derek um, in my opinion, he was one of the worst non-IGL initiator players in America's. Like, it was between him, um, I don't know, like, JZZ. Like, he was down there, man. Um, obviously, one of the main things is I genuinely think he took the Hiko pill, where he just wasn't aggressive enough at most times. Uh, as it says here, he was passive, same thing. Um, and just... I don't know, his util wasn't up to point to, like, supplement that, I guess, if that's the right word. I don't really know. Um, but I think another main thing was he just never 
lived up to his expectations set by NALCQ last year. Um, he was incredible at that tournament. And then he's just never had remotely similar form. Um, he wasn't even up to that in the America's LCQ. Um, I just don't think right now Derek is a good enough player to compete in international leagues. But if he's on like a tier two team, I think he could be a really great player for one of those teams. It's just for 100 Thieves at the tier one level, I'm just not super confident in him. So now I got to get into why I'm keeping each player. So we'll go through Cryo, Asana, and Bang. Not in that order. I'm going to Bang and Asana, but that doesn't matter. Um, but we'll start here with Cryo. First off, he is quite possibly the best defensive side opper in the game. Um, I don't think he's like the best opper in general. I think that's Kong Kong or Aspas, one of those two. Um, but on the defense side, he is just so good. Or Okay, now that I've thought about it, he is not the best defensive side opper in the game. He's like top three behind those two um but he's genuinely underrated with the opera i think um there are con some concerns with how aggressive he is on the attack side he just does not like i don't know he's not when he dashes in he's not scary like Ospos is like kang kang is like um demon one is even i think demon one is a little less scary as an entry player but um I don't know, I'm trying to think of other players like Durka, Durka especially. Um, players like those who put fear into their opponents where Ryo, I just don't think he does that enough, which is why I'm going to be switching him to Sentinel where he can play the chamber more, he can play some Killjoy where he can lurk and not be as aggressive as a player, which I thought was where this team was best um, when Cryo didn't have to be the one entering and Asuna could do it instead. Um, and then we're on to Bang, where I still think he has an extremely high ceiling, whether it be... Okay, how did that go back? There we go. Um, especially at Controller, where he just didn't live up to the expectations set at the beginning of the year by his Red Bull home ground performance, but I do think he still played very well. Um, he can play flex if needed, in my opinion, or at least he, he has in the past at a fairly high level. He even played flex for this team. Um, back before they picked up like the Derek Stellar Will roster. Um, and honestly, there weren't too many better options. I would rather keep Bang than go sign like a Scuba or a Xander, even if they might end up being better controllers, at least right now with Xander's case. Um, I just feel very confident with Bang here. And then Asuna, in my opinion, is the most overhated player in VCT. Uh, that says overhated, not overrated. They're two different things. Um, people shit on him so much. Um, but he had a down year. And honestly, that would be a break. Like, with his statistics, that would probably be a breakout year for most players. Um, he was a little too over-aggressive for Flex, in my opinion. Um, at times, especially when he was playing with the Sky. Like, when he was, f especially with that Will roster, where Will was, like, a pretty good entry player. Um, I thought he was amazing on like the KO stuff, but when he had to play more of a Sky role in this meta and maybe switch to more like Fade Breach stuff, I just, I don't love him for that, even though he is so intelligent with utility, like one of the most intelligent players in terms of race play, um, in terms of, I mean, even his jet like ability usage was really good in my opinion which is part of the reason why I'm switching him back to Duelist, um, where he doesn't need to op as much on a jet or a race, especially if Cryo is going to be opping on Chamber, and he can do a little bit on Killjoy, because that's what Busio has done. Um, but to get a better in-depth explanation on Asuna, we have to go to an interview with Sean Garris that Doug did back like in August of last year, July maybe, during Stage 2 of... NA challengers last year in your eyes what makes him so special um i'm gonna just start out and say like i think asana is the best valorant player i've ever seen he understands how to 
instinct instinctually use utility um more so than any other player that i watch when i watch all these vods like he is and he pairs it with obviously insane mechanics like that it's like when i see him on duelist he understands like stalling he understands creating space he understands zoning he understands when he needs to take initiative he understands when he needs to fall back and i trust him a lot like i trust him as a player a lot to make the correct decisions in chaotic moments all right so now we got to go through what kind of players we need so first of all we need either a flex or a smokes player depending on what we want bang to play um i'll spoil it right now it's gonna be a flex player it's actually a smokes player that i'm switching to flex um but i'm gonna keep bang on his initial role that he was playing for this team throughout this whole roster um, we need a main initiator player uh, to replace Derek's role and then we need an IGL which honestly right now in North America there is an abundance of them so let's get into some of these players where for IGLs we have Vanity, John Cutie, Valen, and Flya. I will be operating under the assumption that um, the guard is not going to make it into franchising as a full team now with some recent tweets by Leo Faria there is a decent chance they do um, but I actually do find it more fun to have even better players in these teams like I I, I literally did the whole offseason I recorded two videos and then the guard news dropped and I'm like god damn it I'm gonna have to redo this aren't I so I redid it I actually do find this a little bit more fun so I'm just gonna go through all of these um, just I don't know just have a little bit more fun and get some better players for these some for some of these teams um but yeah so those four are easily the top four igls those are all free agents um you'll see all of these in different videos i will spoil that now um and then initiators we have brock bcj trent and flya uh flya is a player that i think could igl or could not um depending on if you want to get an igl he is an insane player um but regardless um and then we have some free agent controllers here whether i mean maybe not free agent is the right word but tier two controllers um that's what i mean by free agent and all of these by the way uh you got xander scuba vic and thief um as i talked about earlier um it's not gonna be any of these players uh i'll just tell that i'll tell you that right now and then we have Three flex players here, which I think are franchise caliber, whether it be Jonah, Nismo, and Flya. So, yeah, let's get on to who I ended up picking up. So, we'll start here with the player that I was talking about earlier that will be switching from smokes to flex, and that is our in-game leader, Vanity. Um, he has said on stream that he prefers to play a flex role, not like the initiator stuff that he was playing for Shopify. Um, than any other role while IGLing. Um, so we're going to do that and keep banging on smokes, but those two are definitely interchangeable, which is going to be kind of a theme with this roster, being interchangeable roles on players. Um, in my opinion, he's the best IGL on the market in terms of strictly calling. Um, I don't think John QD's proven enough. Um, I think you could probably argue Valens better, um, considering in this world he is on the market. Um, but regardless, he is probably the most accomplished out of all of them. Um, again, maybe not the best, maybe that's just wrong. Um, but also he's my favorite player and I'm going to put him on my favorite team because I can love vanity and hundred thieves vanity would cure any issues in my life. So that's also part of the reason why I'm picking him up, but also he's an incredible IGL. And then our second player that we'll be picking up is Flya, who I am extremely excited about. Um, he didn't really play Initiator last year for MXM, but has played it in the past for teams and been pretty good at it, like FaZe. Um, and I know he's played it before for other teams, I just don't remember what those other teams are, so I won't name them. Um, he was the best statistical player of Stage 2 Challengers last year, um, along with being one of the most improved players of the year. He went from kind of a a good player to one of the better players 
um, in challengers as a whole and it was one of the big reasons that mxm made their run um he can help with calling he was the igl for mxm last year um i'm not fully there that he could be a main igl but definitely possible um there was a lot of talent on that team so i could definitely see a world where they were kind of just doing a, a lot of mixed calling but i do think in the world that vanity doesn't work out for this team you could just get rid of him pick up a better flex player or better initiator player even and just put fly on igl and let him call um he's also extremely flexible he can play three roles whether it be flex main initiator or uh sentinel i think he might be able to play smokes as well just based on the way he plays but he hasn't proved that yet so i won't list that as a thing um but overall just an incredible player and really should be talked about more when being picked up by some of these tier one teams so to get into our final roster these will be the roles we have asana on main duelist cryo on sentinel flya on initiator vanity on flex and bang on smokes now these roles can move all over the place but to me these are the best roles for these players um like you could put cryo on main duelist um flya on sentinel vanity on initiator asana on flex and bang on smokes S something like that you could swap vanity and bangs roles you could even maybe swap cryo and flya's roles but i wouldn't do that but overall this roster has an insane amount of flexibility and an insane amount of like ability to like maybe make one change to get significantly better and then like become maybe a top team in the world um but let me know what you guys thought of this roster in the comments below um any feedback about the entire video really helps me out um, make sure to leave a like subscribe all that helps me out go follow me on twitter and join my discord all that stuff very very good um and then go check out the next videos that i'll be doing if you're seeing this uh like from september 5th and beyond um i'll be uploading one of these every two days for the next like month so a lot of content coming your way i uh, hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you in the next one peace